In Season 5, Daenerys Targaryen calls the powerful families of Westeros spokes on a wheel, spinning into and out of power through wars, alliances, and betrayals. Daenerys thinks she's going to break the wheel, but she hasn't done much to make it happen, and it's going to take a lot. Here's a history of power, family by family, from the beginning of Game of Thrones to the end of the fifth season. When the series opens, House Baratheon, led by King Robert, is unquestionably the most powerful family in Westeros, with its close ally House Stark outstripping the rich Lannisters and Tyrells. Your Grace, you've got fat. <laughs> the exiled Targaryens, meanwhile, are forced to buy power by marrying into a nomadic Dothraki clan. Is no the only word that you know? No. But House Baratheon's grip on power is not much stronger than Robert's grip on his hunting crossbow. Stinks. Stinks like death. Don't think I can't smell it. <laughs> and after the king's death, Queen Cersei and her sociopathic son Joffrey, a Baratheon in name only, fill the power void, executing Ned Stark and sending his family plummeting down the power rankings by the end of the first season. But not for long. Early in Season 2, Ned's son Rob Stark allies with his mother's family, the Tullys, and wins victories in battle over the Lannisters, managing to improve his family's standing. I'm sending one of your cousins down to King's Landing with my peace terms. You think my father's going to negotiate with you? You don't know him very well. No. But he's starting to know me. Only to find himself leapfrogged by Stannis Baratheon. The Iron Throne is mine. By right. Who kills his brother Renly with a spooky shadow and suddenly appears ready to run the table. <laughs> Until Renly's allies, the Tyrells, align themselves with the Lannisters, taking both families to the top of the power rankings. Your house has come to our aid. The whole realm is in your debt, none more so than I. If your family would ask anything of me, ask it, and it shall be yours. And sending the last true Baratheon tumbling at the end of the second season. Season 3 finds the Stark slipping, too, with Rob angering his allies in House Frey by breaking his marriage contract. I beg your forgiveness, and pledge to do all I can to make amends so the Freys of the Crossing and the Starks of Winterfell may once again be friends. While Stannis attempts to claw his way back to the top. That uniting the Seven Kingdoms with blood magic is wrong. It is evil, and you are not an evil man. But Rob and Catelyn Stark's death in the Red Wedding. The Lannisters and their regards. Eliminate House Stark from contention for the Iron Throne, while Daenerys' acquisition of an army of skilled, unsullied warriors suddenly make her a force to be reckoned with, even a continent away. Perhaps they didn't want to be conquered. You didn't conquer them. You liberated them. In season four, there's a new family in town, literally. Oberyn Martell, brother of Prince Doran of Dorne, shows up in King's Landing for Joffrey's wedding to Marjorie Tyrell. Tell your father I'm here. And tell him the Lannisters aren't the only ones who pay their debts. Reminding everyone there's a whole kingdom to the south that the Lannisters can't forget. Only, maybe the Lannisters aren't the force to be reckoned with. Idiots, help your king! Move away! <laughs> Joffrey's sudden death at the poison-carrying hands of Olenna Tyrell, the Queen of Thorns, puts the schemers of House Tyrell above the cruel tyrants of House Lannister for the first time in this series, while Daenerys' conquest of Marine pushes her above the flailing Stannis. But conquering is easier than ruling, and unexpected resistance weakens Daenerys... The wise masters have retaken control of the city. They've re-enslaved the freedmen who stayed behind and sworn to take revenge against you. Just as Stannis secures a loan that could save his campaign. This is the payment that was demanded by King Stannis for my crimes. I consider it an honest accounting. He's an honest man, and he's your best chance to get back the money you've sunk into Westeros. Which is a lot, I imagine. And Oberyn gets his head crushed by the Lannister bannerman Gregor Clegane. <laughs> Elia Martell! <laughs> I killed her children! Then I raped her! Then I smashed her head in like this! Reminding everyone who the true power is in King's Landing. But if you want to hold on to power, you can't get murdered. You'll kill your own father in the privy. No. We'll go back to my chambers and speak with some dignity. I can't go back there. She's in there. Are you afraid of a dead whore? <laughs> 
Lord Tywin Lannister's death at the hands of his son Tyrion puts Olenna and Marjorie Tyrell back on top in King's Landing, while Stannis' sudden rescue of the Night's Watch puts him in his best position since he nearly took the capital. As season five opens, Daenerys' decision to marry his Darzo Lorak solidifies her power base. I will marry the leader of an ancient family. Thankfully, a suitor is already on his knees. Back in Westeros, Cersei's grip slips even further, and a new power arrives, the religious fanatics known as Sparrows. What would you say if I told you of a great sinner in our very midst, shielded by gold and privilege? May the father judge him justly. But never count Cersei out. Allying herself with the Sparrows, she manages to catapult herself and her family back on top, eliminating the Tyrells, but giving a hand up to the dangerous zealots. Who do you think you are? Justice. Who takes the Tyrell spot? House Bolton, whose forced marriage into House Stark gives them new authority against Stannis, even if it is against Sansa Stark's will. Lady Sansa, will you take this man? I take this man. Then again, allying yourself with extremists tends to backfire, and Cersei's sudden imprisonment, undertaken with the knowledge of Marjorie's grandmother Olenna Tyrell, renders the Lannisters essentially powerless in King's Landing, and puts the wily militant High Sparrow in charge. Confess. My son. Let me speak to her. Meanwhile, up north, Ramsay Bolton's sabotage puts House Bolton at a distinct advantage for the upcoming attack from House Baratheon. A band of 20 men, maybe less. They were in and out before anyone spotted them. And a surprise attack in Marine shows Daenerys to be weak. Not as weak as Stannis, though, whose loss in battle and presumed death mean the end of the Baratheon cause. In the name of Renly of House Baratheon, First of his name, rightful king of the Andals and the First Men, lord of the Seven Kingdoms and protector of the realm, I, Brienne of Tarth, sentence you to die. And the return of Cersei Lannister, freed from prison in time for the arrival of her uncle Kevin to attempt to restore their hold on power in King's Landing. <laughs> it please your grace, he has taken a holy vow of silence. He has sworn that he will not speak until all his grace's enemies are dead and the evil has been driven from the realm. <laughs>